I third and fourth grade. I hope you had a great week. I have another fun project for you to work on this week. This week, we're actually going to be talking about pattern. Now, I'm sure you've talked about pattern in math class with numbers, and we've talked about pattern in art through the years with different things like colors and patterns on projects. So think about patterns in terms of something that repeats like ABC, ABC, the curtains behind me, dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue. This for this project, we're going to be taking patterns and using them to fill different sections of something in to make a bigger picture. So the bigger picture we're making is somebody holding an umbrella in a puddle, which is something we've all been pretty familiar with, with all the rain we've been having. But we're going to be filling it with different colored patterns. So for this project, you're going to need a pencil, an eraser, a white paper. Also grab some colored pens or thin markers if you have them. Colored pencils will work. Crayons are going to make a little more difficulty on this project because we don't have a small point and we're dealing with some smaller spaces to fill with patterns. But if that's all you have, we can make them work too. Grab all those things and meet me back here and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with them. So here you can get a better view of what our project's going to be looking like. You can see it's an umbrella, somebody's um, bottom part of their jacket, their pants, maybe a little bit of their legs, their boots, standing in a puddle. Each section is filled with a different pattern. So I have a lot of patterns here. I was able to do this without repeating patterns, but if you have to, that you get stuck, by all means repeat a pattern or two. But you can, on the page where this video was posted, you'll see that I did share with you some sheets that have ideas for patterns, just to kind of help give you a couple more ideas. But also take a look around your house. I'm sure you have lots of clothes with patterns on. There might be patterns on your couch, on the pillows, on curtains. There's patterns everywhere you look. So I'm sure you won't have a hard time coming up with some new ones. To start this project, we need to start by drawing the umbrella. The umbrella is going to be the most difficult or most challenging part of this project to draw. I'm gonna try and break it down for you into smaller steps so that it's easier for you to draw. And remember, if at any point you need to stop this video to draw what I'm drawing, please do that and then continue the video to the next step. Almost like when we are in the art room and I show you a step, have you go back to your seat to draw it and then you come up front for me to show you the next step. Break it down into those smaller pieces and it's gonna be a lot easier. Our umbrella is shaped a lot like a hexagon. So it has eight sides. So in the top, middle of your paper. So just pretend your paper is folded in half. I have the bottom half and I have the top half. In the top half, in the center of that top half, I'm going to draw a line. And you can see, based on my eraser, it's not a super big line. It's smaller than my eraser here by a little bit. And then I'm going to go down a decent amount and try and draw the same size line right below it. Now I'm going to do the same size line on either side, leaving space to connect them with angled lines or diagonal lines. So I draw a line here. Again, I want to try and make it about the same size as the two lines that I already drew, the same length. Same thing here. Now I can draw lines to connect these four that are going to be diagonal. These diagonal lines should actually work out to be about the same size as the four that I already drew. So there's my hexagon. This, like I said, is probably the most challenging part of this project. Don't get yourself too frustrated if it's not a perfect octagon, um, hexagon, I'm sorry, octagon. I forgot my shapes for a minute. Maybe I need to go back to math class. Not a perfect octagon. With the person holding the umbrella is kind of standing on an angle, so it might not be a perfect octagon, and that's fine. Just try and make it as close to an octagon with all the same sizes, size sides as you can, but if they're not exactly the same, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from side to side. Just pick one side to draw it to the other side. Just to start, we're just going to draw one line that's kind of going to kind of divide our octagon in half. So there's my halfway point. And I'm going to do another one that's going to divide it in half again. So now I kind of have quarters, okay? 
And you can tell, see, I didn't use a ruler for any of this. I'm just kind of eyeballing and guessing as I go. So there's the center of my umbrella. I have the four sections. And what I want to do is, if you look at my example, the lines aren't completely straight here at the ends. They kind of curve and that's going to help make the umbrella look more rounded because you know an umbrella is kind of domed to make the rain fall off the sides. So I'm going to follow this line and I'm going to curve, go back and do that again. I'm following that line, but I'm actually going to go above the line a little bit and then curve down. Then I go to the next line, go above it a little bit and curve down. Go above it a little bit and curve down just to kind of help give the umbrella that more domed look so it looks like the rain is actually going to fall off of it now i need to do the same thing to those spaces or those corners of my umbrella in between the quarters i already made go in between and it curves down curves down also kind of reminds me of like um the mint candies that you sometimes get at restaurants where it turn, it looks like the mint is turning. That's kind of what you want to have on your umbrella too. So now I have my umbrella done. I can go in and start adding the person. So for the person's jacket or skirt, whatever they might be wearing, it's basically a triangular shape, except the top part of that triangle is hidden behind the umbrella. So you don't see that very top of the triangle. There's the jacket. Now for the legs or the pants, you're just gonna go in a little bit and draw two, a line down. Go in the middle of those two lines, middle of that space and draw another line. These lines aren't quite as long as the space for the jacket. They can be longer if you want. It depends on how tall you want your person to be. The trick is at the bottom here, I'm not gonna draw a straight line. Because the legs are curved, I wanna make these just a little bit of a curve. Go in again a little bit and draw a line down on each side and take that line in the middle down. Here would be the legs. Then it's time for the boots. And again, the line in the middle goes down the whole way. And for the boot, here the leg, the pants curve down. This time the boot's also gonna curve down and the boot on the left side is just gonna be a curved line at the bottom too. That would be like where the bottom of the foot is. The boot on the right side here, you're actually gonna see the front of the boot a little bit. So you're gonna to wanna to make that part where the toes are, just like that. This is kind of a tricky, profile view of a person to draw, but I think you guys are up for the challenge. Then we want to make the puddle and you can make your puddle any shape you want, any good puddle shape. And now all that's left is to start filling with pattern. So what I did before I filled with pattern was I traced all of my areas with Sharpie just so I had a clean idea of where all the different sections were, made it a lot easier once I started filling things in with the, sharp, uh, the patterns. So I'm just going to trace over all my pencil lines with this Sharpie quick. Okay, then you can start filling it in with pattern. Now, for the patterns, you might want to start drawing it with pencil first. I'm just going to draw mine with marker right away because this is the second one of these that I've done. 
and I have a lot more practice drawing patterns than you guys do, but if you feel confident enough to draw it with your marker or your pens or your colored pencils right away, go for it. Just remember, you might not be able to erase if you make a mistake. So I'm gonna take a bunch of different colors. I just have these to start. And each section of my umbrella, I wanna try and give a different pattern. So in one section, I might start drawing just different size circles. Some big circles, some medium circles, some small circles. And they're all touching, they're all close together, side by side, filling the whole space in. Maybe in another section, I do something like little hearts that are colored in. Almost like polka dots, but instead of dots, I'm using hearts. We really want our umbrella to be nice and bright and colorful. So if you want, you could even color behind the hearts here with a different color to really brighten the colors. Just an idea. In another section, maybe I do a zigzag line or a zigzag pattern. Now you would fill the whole section in here. I'm just gonna do a couple just to give you an idea of patterns and then the rest you would be filling in, but you don't need to spend your whole day watching me fill in patterns. You can also do something just as simple as straight lines like stripes. If you wanna use a ruler for it, great, but you don't have to if you don't have one handy or if you would like one and don't have a ruler handy, use the edge of a cereal box or a edge of the box of granola bars or something. As long as it's a straight edge that's a pretty hard piece of cardboard, it'll work just as well as a ruler to draw the lines since we're not really measuring. Down here with my puddle, I did some with circles. Let me grab a blue marker for that. I made this kind of ripple effect. And to do that, I'll show you that one real quick because I think it's pretty fun. You start with a circle somewhere and then draw a bunch of circles around it, each one getting a little bit bigger as you go. And then I'm gonna start another circle here. Draw circles around it. but my circles are gonna look like they're kind of overlapping with that first set of circles that I drew there. And they just keep doing that over and over, circles that look like they're overlapping throughout the whole puddle. And it gives that ripple effect, like if you threw a rock in a little lake and had the ripples from the rock hitting the water. So you just wanna fill each section in. You can see on mine, I filled the boots with the same pattern, the legs have the same pattern, the pants are the same pattern, and the rain jacket's one pattern. If you really wanted to go crazy and if you really had a lot of patterns, you could do each boot a different color, each leg a different, I'm sorry, different pattern, each leg a different pattern, each pant leg a different pattern. You could really go nuts with the patterns. I am giving you the option to use as many or as little patterns as you want. Also, I didn't color in many spaces between my patterns, but you can, that'll make it even more colorful. So you can really do as much or as little with this as you'd like. I'd love to see pictures of these when you're done. I think they're pretty fun, and I'd love to see all the different patterns that you come up with. So I hope you have fun with your pattern project this week. Again, make as many different patterns as you can. If you can't quite come up with a different pattern for every section, maybe use one in the umbrella and use the same one for the boots. 
that's okay. But try and come up with some different patterns. Don't use all the ones that I came up with. Like I said, I did post some sheets on the page where this video is located to give you some ideas of some different patterns. And also look around your house, look outside. Hopefully it's not raining outside, but look outside too. There's patterns everywhere. And I'm sure if you're looking for them, you'll see, be able to see a lot more than you normally would. If you get a chance to send me a picture of your project, I would love to see it. You guys have been doing a great job with these projects and I love seeing what you're coming up with each week. So please keep them coming. Those silly sandwiches were great. Some of you got really silly with your foods and I'd love to see these as well. Have a great week and I'll see you next week with something new. Bye boys and girls.